when the, the ozone depleting substances get into the atmosphere, they, they, they usually are not destroyed in the troposphere, but they get high into the atmosphere, into the stratosphere, where they are destroyed, and they can produce compounds, uh, small, small compounds, atoms, radicals, which can destroy ozone. But the chemistry doesn't stop there. There's a, there's a chain of reactions which go on, which produce uh, other gases, gases like from the chlorine gases, hydrochloric acid, chlorine nitrate, which don't destroy ozone. Now, in polar latitudes, normally, most of the gases, most of these degradation products from the ozone depleting substances are in the form of hydrochloric acid and chlorine nitrate, gases that don't destroy ozone. So the trigger for polar loss are actually meteorological conditions which turn these gases, hydrochloric acid, chlorine nitrate, into the reactive gases that can destroy ozone in sunlight. And those meteorological conditions are primarily that it has to be cold, temperatures below about 195 Kelvin, lead to the formation of polar stratospheric clouds, and reactions on those clouds can turn these gases, these degradation gases, into the, the ones that destroy ozone. And secondly, uh, along with the cold, the isolation of that part of the atmosphere can be important for the process as well. So if, 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 if the, the, the air masses there are confined and constrained and don't mix, then that also is conducive to, to ozone loss. So essentially, you need to have uh, an abundance of these gases, pretty much the same in both hemispheres, and then you need the low temperatures. And in the Antarctic, those conditions are present pretty well every year. They're present through the, the winter and into the crucial springtime period when the sunlight can destroy ozone. It's always very cold in the Antarctic, um, sufficient to form these polar stratospheric clouds and for the chemical transformation to happen. And also, the, 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 polar, the polar region in Antarctica is very isolated by a strong wind system that, that, that blows around the, the Antarctic. So the Antarctic, we see ozone depletion every year, and that's why we, see, we, see, we saw um, the, the, the first evidence of, of this ozone depletion was in Antarctica. The Arctic is a bit different. The Arctic doesn't always get as cold, and it's much more variable. But the conditions do obtain in the Arctic in some years. And in those years, then we do see ozone depletion. 